Hello and welcome everyone to our second module in the ABG Interpretation and Fluid Electrolyte course. It is 7 steps in ABG Interpretation and it has been presented by Dr. Abhilas Das who is an Assistant Professor in Department of Critical Care Medicine, IMS and Summer Hospital. Hello, welcome to our latest presentation on the interpretation of ABG. As we know, ABG is the most basic investigation in the ICU. The purpose of blood gas analysis. From this, we can know the oxygenation status, the ventilation status, and the acid base status of the patient. It will help in management plan and also will know the derangements and the efficacy of treatment, mainly ventilatory treatment. The information contained in ABG may be measured values and calculated values. pH, PO2, and PSO2 are measured and bicarb. Saturation of oxygen, base excess, these are calculated values. There are some conditions that may modify the ABG results and it may result to invalidating the results. Delayed analysis. If we draw the blood and we wait for some time, then we do the ABG. There may be consumption of oxygen so that the PO2 level will be low and PCO2 level will also be high. So, it is better to store in a high uh, in eyes the sample and uh, it can be stored for one to two hours then we can do the ABG. If the patient is having very high grade fever or hypothermia there will be fallacious results of pH, pCO2 and PO2. Excessive heparin also affects the pH. If the already the patient is having acidemia the pH will show less and if the patient is alkalo alkalotic the, there will be uh, neutralization of the pH so that the pH will show a bit low. And the type of syringe is also important. Usually glass syringe is better than plastic syringes. Glass syringe is less pervious to oxygen so the uh, PO2 what we will see in ABG if drawn in glass syringes will correlate better. There is a condition called leukocyte larceny. There is leukocytosis and thrombocytosis as in some blood cancers there will be increased consumption of oxygen so that the ABG will show low PO2. Now coming to the stepwise assessment of the ABG. First step is the assessment of validity of the result. According to henderson hasselbeck equation we should know the H plus level in, in the body. The formula is 24 into PSO2 by bicarb. And there is a table that correlates the pH with H plus level. If, if the correlation is okay, then it is a valid ABG. If there is discrepancy, then definitely we have to do repeat the ABG again. Step 2 is whether the patient is acidemic or alkalemic. We see the pH if it is less than 7.35, acidemia is there. And if it is more than 7.45, alkalemia is there. And what is acidosis? A process that would that would cause acidemia if not compensated. There are four primary acid based disorders that is metabolic acidosis and alkalosis, respiratory acidosis and alkalosis. The next step is we should know which is the primary disorder. We have to see the change in PCO2, pH and bicarb. If the PCO2 is derived in the same direction of pH then the primary acid uh, disorder is acidemia, respiratory acidosis. If the PCO2 is derived in the opposite direction of pH, then the primary disorder is respiratory. In this example, we can see the pH is 7.3, 7.25 and PO2 is 60 and bicarb is 26. Definitely it is respiratory acidosis. Here we can see if there is uh, pH is 7. less than 7.4, it is acidosis. And if PO2 is more than 40, it is acidosis. And bicarb is less than 24, it is acidosis. In the step 4, it is the compensation. For a respiratory disorder, is renal compensation okay? For respiratory acidosis, there is one acute compensation and one chronic compensation. Acute is within 24 hours and chronic is more than 24 hours. For acute compensation, there is a formula. We have to memorize the formula. It is change in bicarbonate is equal to 1 by 10 change in PCO2. 
for chronic compensation it is change in bicarbonate is equal to four times the change in bicarbon the change in pco2 by 10 for respiratory alkalosis in for acute compensation the factor is 2 and for chronic compensation the factor is 5 step 5 is if the disturbance is metabolic is is the respiratory compensation appropriate there is one equation called winters equation the expected pco2 is 1.5 times the bicarbonate plus 8 plus minus 2 and for metabolic alkalosis expected pco2 is 0.7 into bicarbonate plus 21 plus minus 1.5 if there is no compensation the actual pco2 if it is more than expected then definitely there is hidden respiratory acidosis and the actual pco2 if it is less than expected then there is hidden respiratory alkalosis if the patient is having metabolic acidosis is there an anion gap it is the step 6 we have to look for any hidden ions the formula is sodium minus chloride plus bicarb it is the anion gap which is usually less than 12 if it is more than 12 it is high anion gap metabolic acidosis and we know the uh, mud piles it is methanol uremia diabetic ketoacidosis paraldehyde infections salicylates it's variable anion gap uh, in uh, in our blood there is albumin phosphorus and unmeasured anions they will lead to variable anion gap. So, there is a correction if the albumin is less in chronic ill patients. The formula is anion gap corrected is normal anion gap plus 4 minus albumin into 2.5. The step 7 is delta ratio. Delta ratio is increase in anion gap by decrease in bicarbonate. To see whether the increase in anion gap is uh, compensated by the decrease in bicarbonate if the value is less than 0.4 there is normal anion gap acidosis if the value is 0 0.4 to 1 there is combination of high anion gap and normal anion gap acidosis if it is 1 1 is 1 to 2 the pure high it is pure high anion gap acidosis and if the ratio is more than 2 there is high anion gap acidosis with concurrent metabolic alkalosis now one important part in ABG will see the oxygenation status so that we will look for at the PO2 and SO2 first. If there is low PO2 definitely there is something wrong in the term of oxygenation and uh, there is degree of hypoxemia. Saturation of hemoglobin that is SO2 is dependent on PO2. The causes of hypoxia may be hypoxemia, may be due to low hemoglobin level, may be due to any um, hemoglobin disorders, dyshemoglobinemias like sickle cell disease or maybe due to any toxicity that, that will cause histotoxic hypoxia. You have to analyze the adequacy of oxygenation by the AA gradient that is alveolar oxygenation minus partial pressure of oxygen in blood. PO2 is always calculated based on FI2, PSO2 and parametric pressure. It is the alveolar gas equation. PAO2 is equal to FiO2 into atmospheric pressure minus 47 minus PaCO2 by respiratory question. So it will come to around 150 minus PaCO2 by respiratory question which is 0.8. The normal A gradient increases with age. The normal A gradient is a formula age by 4 plus 4. If the in a hypoxic patient the A gradient is more then definitely there is a stunt or VQ mismatch or there is impaired diffusion and if the AA gradient is normal there is definitely hypoventilation or the inspired PO2 FiO2 is low. Now next thing is PF ratio it measures the severity of hypoxemia in ARDS that is mild is around 200 to 300 moderate is 100 to 200 severe is less than 100. Another thing we will see in ABG is the saturation gap SpO2 minus SaO2 more than 5% is significant it, it occurs in methemoglobinemia and carboxyhemoglobinemia. So to summarize the presentation step 1 is assess the validity of the ABG results. Step 2 is find out whether there is acidemia or alkalemia. Step 3 is try to find 
a primary disorder whether it is metabolic or respiratory if it is a respiratory disorder then find the renal compensation if it is a metabolic disorder find the respiratory compensation and it is appropriate or not if it is a metabolic acidosis then calculate the anan gap finally step 7 is calculate the delta anan gap in metabolic acidosis this will help us in identifying if there is an acid additional metabolic disorder like a normal anan gap metabolic acidosis or metabolic alkalosis present along with high anan gap metabolic acidosis. thank you for your patience take your website to project